Hello, everyone, and welcome to the monthly free episode of the Outside Noise podcast, available wherever you stream podcasts. My, I'm your co-host, Carrie. I'm joined by Kaylin, Julia, and Michael. And this week, month, we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> the best album, the album of the month. We have four beautiful albums to choose from, from different weeks in September, and I'm very excited to... Uh, sit down with you all and kind of talk about what our favorite one might be. How are you guys doing? Awesome! <laughs> Yay. I saved it, guys. Don't worry. Yes. <laughs> we figured yes. it out. <laughs> um, we usually go through these in chronological order. Do we yep. want to say them all first or do we just let it unfold naturally? No, no. Um, yeah, let's, let's start. Start at the first one. Start at the okay. first one with the week of September 6th is Three by Ubek. Yes. This... We're pulling all of these from our favorite albums of the week oh. from our album of the week podcast that's only on patreon yes of course i forgot to mention that as well um yeah we we talk about our albums of the week every single week on our patreon and these are the winners and now it's in like the ultimate final bracket tournament thing so usually these are all albums that we've already reviewed on tiktok or on our website right but this one the first one that we're talking about three by ubek is not yeah. We ended up not actually review. writing a review for this. Yep. Um, but it still won our album of the week discussion back on that first week of September. And I think it was well-deserved to win that week. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a really interesting kind of like sound collage, experimental electronic album. Um, I believe this is a duo from Poland. Yes. And you can really see that kind of like Eastern European influence, both musically and in the like visual direction for the album. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a lot of inspiration from kind of like Soviet era art um and then yeah it's like very disjointed it goes through these sort of like dream sequences it's only two tracks but each track has like a lot of variation in each movement um really really fun stuff i love a lot of that like experimental electronic music we cover some of it but not tons and tons and this was definitely one that i mean it didn't slip over our radar because we ended up talking about it on the podcast but um i think i was just super super busy and i i couldn't i didn't really have the bandwidth right. to write about as far it as week. like getting its own review yeah right right um but i'm glad we got to talk about it a little bit uh earlier in september and i'm really glad we get to talk about it now yeah maybe we can do a retrospective Ooh. maybe so um yeah it's in that sound collage genre which is pretty hot right now so mm-hmm. Um, and it's, yeah, like Caleb said, very, very post-Soviet. I think Stalin is right there on the cover. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, a lot of very, like, interesting samples. I don't know where they're all from, and the yeah. way that, that they're utilized really tells, like, a narrative throughout the album. Right. Like, uh, like references that I might not get, but I guess if I grew up in the, in the late Soviet period, <laughs> maybe I would, maybe they would be nostalgic for me, but... A lot of it is in English, so it's, yeah, it's not yeah. totally... But there, but there is some of that stuff that is pulled from pulled from that era but. yeah um just a really fun listen yeah i yeah. love the yeah. like atmosphere that it builds it's very cohesive overall um great stuff hell yeah thank cool. you Ubek. i don't have too much more to say about it, <laughs> <laughs> um love the Ubek. yeah i was there when we talked about it oh my god sorry guys <laughs> in theory in th- theoretically i was in the room when it happened <laughs> um yeah that's great that was september 6th um, and then yeah I- I can do the next one. If you yeah, want pop to. off. Go for it. Um, Viewfinder. Viewfinder by uh, Wendy Eisenberg. Um, so this is a experimental jazz album. Again, kind of similar to Ubek. Not a genre that we really d- do a ton from. But I thought this was a cut above a lot of what you see in that um, in that world because of its. Um, well, it was a lot easier to parse because it has a lot of lyrical content. So it, um, it wasn't just pure abstraction. Um, and that lyrical content pointed towards this really compelling story about the band leader who had all sorts of problems with their vision and eyes and got it all solved with LASIK surgery and was kind of in the aftermath of that surgery was kind of discovering what they had been missing out on and what they hadn't. It's like, no, the world doesn't suddenly look like an LSD trip. It's like, how far did you think it went? 
um, whenever you had um, vision impairments, did you think the world, like whenever you imagined the way the world would look with a healthy eye, did you imagine it the way that it actually is with a healthy eye or did you imagine it being so much more, so much more intense? Right, because you don't know um, what that's like. Yeah, exactly. you, All you have is your expectation of it. Yeah. So it's very much about like reconciling that, but also seeing like, Seeing, like, the advancements of modern medicine as well yeah, at the yes. same time. Yeah. Um, and they talked a lot, too, about the physical healing process after surgery and how there's, like, a period of time where you literally can't see. And then you also have to deal with certain side effects, like mm. dry eyes or, like, temporarily um, blurriness and, and yeah. stuff like that. So it was a very... Um, like nuanced take we talked about this album for a really yeah. long time on, <laughs> um on on that podcast episode too the, yeah. this was a very very rich um very thoughtful album mm-hmm. yeah. yeah they even talk about um process of going through that surgery like the miracle of it yeah it's a bizarre thing to experience yes they keep yeah. you awake you're looking straight into a bright light and it just cuts the inside of your eye with the lasers yeah and that's what they're mimicking on the album cover yeah um, You're like assisting in the surgery, sort of, yes, right? They're like, they tell look you, up, look, look this way, yeah, this yeah. Way, look this way, and you have to, um, you have to do uh, it. And there's some amount of user error there as a patient, which is kind of scary in its own right. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's like, um, do you do you, like no? I don't know. Sure. I mean, like I don't you're know. like I think I'm looking to the right. Yeah, they might have some sort of target you can mm, look at or something. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, very bizarre surgery, and this person's response to it is very one of a kind, very artistic, very deep and contemplative. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, like I said in my review, it's remarkable how much darkness there is in an album about the regaining of sight. I mean, it's just very, um, very nuanced, very interesting, um, a one of a kind. Um, kind of recollection of this life experience. And I, I only just thought about this as you were saying that, but yeah, just the the visual sense being repaired and like translating that into sound sort of makes it a lot more achievable for other people to understand, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a really smart way of communicating it um, when vision is so subjective and we don't yeah. know how everyone else sees. Yeah, but sound kind of carries you know from person to person yeah so um yeah that's cool no it's a it's a fantastic album it was so fucking good definitely mm-hmm. deserving of that album of the week spot on september 13th yes yep. yes um and i love all of the jazz instrumentation too all of these yes, musicians yes. are incredibly talented even as someone who doesn't know anything even a little bit about music theory um <laughs> this is highly enjoyable to listen to um start to finish mm-hmm. yeah and and wendy's voice is is captivating it's awesome too. yeah um, um, really the icing on the cake. It's what, uh, it's what kind of set, it, it, it gives structure to this. It, it makes you, um, you know, it feels like you have a guiding hand through it, um, in this person who you hear and who you feel so personally, um, which is, uh, comforting in a, um, like free jazz style environment, which can be very disorienting and confusing mm-hmm. and all that. For sure. Yeah. Amazing. You want to talk about the next one? Yeah. That next was your, up. that was your... Yeah. That was your album. You love it. Yes, I love this one. Next up is Rhetoric and Terror by Non Perels. Um, this is a very fun, um, dark yet whimsical avant rock release. Um, what week? 20th? Oh, the 20th. 20th. Yeah, of September. Um, we had a lot of good avant rock that week as well, but this mm-hmm. one really stood out to me. Um had a very interesting concept as well as sound that was pretty varied um and i don't hear a lot of that coming out of avant rock maybe um yeah it was about um his experience being this kind of artist who does all of these you know delves into these very dark kind of depressive philosophical subjects but then also has to be um the parent of a child who is like a toddler yeah, and yes. has to be, has to basically become Barney for a few hours. A day, <laughs> right. Um, it's like, and, how do I turn all of this into like, how am I the same person right. through every single movement? Trying to synthesize every, all yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, they got their partner in the mix. So it, and you even got both parents kind of commenting on that in this album. And um, I thought it was a really, you know, something, 
It's a, it's a, it, you know, it's not a life or death struggle, and I think that's kind of even acknowledged with the whimsical nature of the album. But right. it's still something you don't hear about a lot. It's uh, most parents are kind of too nose to the grindstone <laughs> with the whole kid thing to really be making an album like this. So it's yeah. a cool, unique perspective. Um, it's nice that he's trying to connect with his child, also to kind yeah. of briefly turn off the like brooding artist right. persona to, yeah, <laughs> to totally. hang out with your mm-hmm. toddler. Yeah, it's like I, you're, you're not above, um, you know, playing peekaboo. Um, right. which is great you don't need you shouldn't be if you're if you have a toddler in the house right uh, you don't want your toddler reading con that's, not, that's <laughs> or not yeah cool. telling your toddler about the war right. like, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah this is like an artistic switch up for the artist because yeah. it used to be like a solo project and now he has all these people from all aspects of his life happening on this album right i see so that the too people yeah. along the way. like yeah. an achievement yeah like just this is my life and that's like what he wants to do going forward yes and like finding a place in parenthood and like relying more on community because you can't do it all yourself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah and even though um none of us here are parents it's (laughs) still relatable as an idea too of that sort of code switching of having to Mm -hmm. to change who you are around different people yeah and then Um, figuring out where the through line is and yeah and it's it's kind of different where it's like if you're code switching in front of like your boss that you don't like versus this guy is doing it w- between two things that he absolutely loves right like being a parent and being an artist right but yeah that's um, true uh, but still it, it's it is something that we all experience and um and it's always like it's as you emerge into new stages of your life you have more you have an increase in that it's like as you're like an adolescent and you're a different person in front of your parents as you are in front of your teachers as you are in front of your friends and then um you know, uh, every time you enter into a new phase like parenthood, there's new contradictions you overcome. So I, I don't know. It's it's relatable at a lot of stages of life. Um, even if you've never been a parent, you can find something here for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Great. And then uh, moving on to the one that we just got done talking about yes. on our most recent edition of Album of the Week. Uh yeah, do you you got it? I can do it. Yeah, yeah go for it. Um, Thirteen inch <laughs> Frank Beltre Italian stiletto with bison horn grips by Shushu. Um, this one you probably have heard of, or at least you might have heard of it, right. um, <laughs> as compared to a lot of these other ones, which are by um, uh, underground artists. This is an experimental artist, but I would not say underground. They're pretty well known if you mm-hmm. like experimental and are into that kind of thing, or like have ever liked experimental yeah, music. Yeah, you, you've heard of been them yeah. for quite a while. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, noise pop. Um, this is uh, you know, so noise pop is kind of their whole bag over at Shushu and company, but um, this is more on the pop side than we've seen in a while. Um, you know, consistently great output, very varied output, but, um, think about this more on the pop side of the catalog if you haven't already checked it out. And, um, it is kind of reckoning with this idea of how do we continue being subversive when being subversive has become the thing that the industry wants from us? Um, at what point does being subversive just, um, play into their hands and, Right, and it's kind of a lose-lose in that way. You know, you're trying to be weird, but you're, like, either not weird enough or you are just selling out. You just become the weird guy. Yeah, Yeah. it's like, what do we fucking do? But, no, no, it's still very strange and experimental in the way that that they love to do. But Michael made a good point when we were um, doing the Album of the Week episode on this, that, like, um, the singles from the album Mm -hmm. picked apart and listened to, like, apart from the album order are specifically noticeably more pop than i guess the mm-hmm. deep cuts where mm-hmm. they tend to get a little yeah. deeper and a little more yeah. substantial i mean they'd be some of the poppiest songs they've ever made i mean right. they almost sounded like radioable in some well, sense and that like not being a failure and like once you've been around yeah. for as long as you haven't have as many albums out of course you're going to do a couple pop songs right. and it's not it's just being being uh, versatile, I yeah. guess. Yeah. It's also worth noting when you play the album in order, beginning to end, you might not even think of it that way. Totally, Absolutely. yes. Kind of in in well context, that's a good point it too. Feels yeah. very them still. It's yes. not like yeah. not that the pop sound doesn't suit them anyway. That's no, but totally, the pacing yeah. of the album is really built it, not just like around the singles, but it it flows in a way that it all feels like very natural. Yes. Um, and I mean, if you do sit down and listen to an album and it's just like chaos the whole time, then that can also be a little too much. Bad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> definitely sure. eases you in and then there's like this really awesome peak and then it just 
drops you off. It's really yes. good. Um, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this album. This is one mm-hmm. that I voted for it that week as well. Yeah. <laughs> I led the way on. Um, and I also liked their discussion of moving from America to Germany, mm-hmm. um, settling in Berlin, and kind of that new context giving them inspiration for the record as well. Um, just in, in the context, I guess, of finding new community and also getting out of this country while the getting's good, you know? <laughs> um, they, they described it as, like, getting ahead of disaster. Um, and I, I think that this record kind of shows that, like, foresight mm. in, in a way. Yeah. yeah. I think that's our next step. We gotta go to Berlin. I would love to. Mm-hmm. Yay. Great. Let's pack it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, those um, are our four albums. Great. Um, how are we feeling for uh, album of the month? What's the vibe? I think I have one. I think I have one. I think I have one, too. I mean, this is kind of interesting because, well, actually, this is all a lose-lose for me because I don't, this is the first time that um, we've ever done one of these where I um, was not the original vote on any album. (laughs) Um, which is kind of sad, but sorry, um, Michael. It's okay. Just you were outvoted. Better um, opinions next uh, time, my friend. Yeah, it looks like it looks like Kaylin was the most on the money this Woo. month, but um, <laughs> I am going to pick Viewfinder by Wendy Eisenberg. Hmm. And the more I think about it, the more I think that I might have even, if I could go back and do it again, picked that album. Yeah. Uh, because I because it has stood out to me uh, more than anything else from the month. Yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot to dig into, yeah. listening to it multiple times yeah. as well. I don't think I need to rehash because I already did the explanation of that. Yeah. yeah, and of course the album of the week episode, like Kaylin said, we, we, got, we jumped way in. Yeah. So, yeah. We talked um, a lot yeah. about that album. I'm definitely between the Wendy Eisenberg and the Juju. Me too. Um, but What does Julia pick? Well, I was kind of thinking non pareils. You can stick with non pareils. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. You can have I'm gonna it. Go it doesn't for, matter. I'll go for Wendy. I'll, I'll go, go for Wendy. Oh, okay, shit. Cool. Great. Wendy that Eisenberg feels good. wins. Yes, well deserved. You find her. Yes. Um, yes. Um, Fabulous. That, that was so easy. <laughs> it's not It's it's not always that, in fact, it is rare that an experimental jazz record makes it that far on a right. bracket. But, and um, it's so, yeah, it just makes such an impression and is so emotional. And, yeah. 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 Uh, this really is, good, this varied really sound. Yeah. Beautifully yeah. arranged. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This person had good command over the ensemble, was able to kind of put their personality into it um, and not just make it completely dissolve into chaos so mm-hmm. much personality it's, it's like voice. such at the core of the record yeah, yeah. um yeah fantastic oh, yeah. album great. great job um wendy eisenberg congrats and, wendy. Uh, i know we have quite a few honorable mentions yeah we can go for the month as well mentions. yeah oh yeah um yeah so i guess i I'm, I'm first up on this list <laughs> um and it's all in the Cyrillic alphabet, so I don't actually know um, <laughs> the name of the album. But the band's name is um, Peter's Denial. Um, this will all be in the show notes as well. So even though I don't know the name, you can find it. Uh, <laughs> we we uh-huh. had it translated. It pronounces Plodni Ujas. It's okay. Midday Horror. Midday Horror. That's right. Great. <laughs> we did it, guys. Um, wow. But um, yeah, so this is, uh, we, we, I feel like we kind of cover a lot of this on uh, on here, but it's it's uh, um, post-hardcore slash screamo slash first wave emo project and um it is very just right down the middle with what that style does um and it um has this very compelling kind of like storyline at least according to google translate it does (laughs) um where it um it takes you down the path of like somebody who is um living in this society where you either have to be like a super orthodox, super traditional Christian and also a fascist, or you can be a complete nihilist who doesn't have any convictions at all. And this person's like in down that nihilist path and it is not doing it for them. <laughs> and it, and this album is about just completely like losing hope and finding any meaning in anything. Right. And um, it is very desperate. The album, it's like, 
it it's like s- scary when the album like starts off intense and then dies out where it's like you know that intensity is still there but they've just kind of given up yeah whatever fight they have you lose steam this was yeah. my pick for that week too i really loved this album um like you said it's nihilistic but at the same time it's energetic and it's restless in yeah. that way that um 90s post hardcore and screamo is it's yeah yeah it's so cool they absolutely picked the best sound yeah. for that uh feeling they wanted to convey and that's mm-hmm. what we like to see here so yes oh yeah um the one on my list as well is kind of similar in vibe and message was passions like tar by laos um this is pretty straightforward post-punk kind of gothic in tone and it's also i guess it's a little bit the the reverse side it is finding the the joy in nihilism <laughs> as you might expect from like a, a goth record which i just have to have to promote around this time of year you know <laughs> you know how it is <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say mine is After Image by Hyper Gal. It is a pop-adjacent Japanese album. I'm all, I love Japanese, um, so it was already something that I'm, like, geared towards me already. Um, it's just taking pop music to its next inevitable step, really tearing it apart. Um, it has these, like, pop-like movements, and it has this synthesizer... It's really fun. It's really gorgeous. It takes it to like a no wavy kind yeah. of a place. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah. It, it takes the energy and some of the aesthetic behind pop and um, throws it in a no wave environment, which yeah. makes it, it, it's just very interesting. It's yeah. like pop, but like gritty and dark, but not just like gritty and dark. Like we hear like dark pop, yeah. like Billie Eilish. It's it, like, it's, it's like the, it's like the way a pop sound, pop music sounds if you just took 200 Benadryls. <laughs> no, Cause it still has like this accessibility to it. It's not like this completely out there mm-hmm. creation, but I, I really love it. I think it sits in with Japan noise very nicely. I think it has added a lot to that sound yeah no i really like it we I had it's very um, good. we had brack girl summer and now yeah. we can have japanese pop fall yeah it's been <laughs> japanese pop fall for like a few years for like a decade right like a decade <laughs> <laughs> i love that though it that's a good ends. thing i yeah. love it um yeah love it hell yeah thank you hyper gal um i've got a few honorable mentions to touch on here um, I almost jokingly voted for plie for my album of the month anyway. We had, we had, a, we had a debate last episode um, when it was up against Juju, so I will just shout it out here. Um, really cool, sort of disjointed no wave. Goes in a lot of different directions, a lot of different production styles. Um, it has its moments of being very metallic and also kind of rolling synths that you get a lot in EDM music as well and sort of an industrial and experimental hip hop bend. Um, So interesting and so vicious at the same time. Um, These people are from Lithuania. Yes. I looked it up during the break. Uh, (laughs) I think I said Latvia during the episode. Yeah, Um, yeah. (laughs) just a really cool and intense um, album that has been on my rotation this today. Uh, (laughs) We know exactly what we're doing by Plie. Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. I just said Plie. The the album title being We Know Exactly What We're Doing. And then just two quick ones. Um, Two albums by the same artist. This person put these two albums out on the same day. It's Juan Moon. Michael, it's spelled H-U-O-N, M-O-O-N. Um, this is kind of tricky for people to find. I recommend just looking them up on Rate Your Music and going from there, and then you should be able to find the albums. But the albums were um, One Moon and Death Go Lila Movement by Yukiga Fute Resi. You'll find it, Michael. You got this. It. Nice. Um, it's Harsh Noise Wall, but it's super interesting. They have a lot of really weird samples and, and spoken word and stuff thrown cool. in there, and just super textural, really cool. We don't write about a lot of harsh noise wall but these two really caught my attention um and it made me want to keep an eye on this artist because they put out a ton of shit like all the time so awesome um for almost the opposite of that i liked lacuna and parlor by more ease Mm -hmm. this was sort of like an ambient americana and contemporary classical fusion um and i really liked the kind of like pedal steel like slow long drawn out okay um kind of spaciousness and then combined with some of the more like traditional classical instrumentation and composition choices um just really beautiful lovely 
relaxing, meditative. Um, and I liked sort of the like Americana bend to it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially in like a more classical or chamber arrangement yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, that can sound that's really nice. It's really nice. It's nice. It's good, and I liked it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, those are all my honorable mentions. That's all I got. Um, let's see. Do I have one more on here? Um, oh yeah, I also yeah, I also wanted to shout out um, "Spirits Align" by the Man from Atlantis. Um, that one was a also Americana like blues um, and Indian classical music. Um, much more like psychedelic and experimental than the More Ease album, um, since it's obviously like uh, fusing Americana with a totally different musical tradition. <laughs> yeah, literally, like a, a whole different um, way of counting and, and everything. Yes, yeah, um, the Indian classical tradition is is so crazy. fucking cool. Uh, yeah. I I really enjoyed reading the artist statement about the Man from Atlantis mm-hmm. album as well because it sounds like he really like worked with a lot of people from the like Indian classical music tradition to 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 make this thing. So. Hell yeah. It sounds like a very um, fruitful experience <laughs> for all involved. <laughs> Full. Um, oh, nice. Well, both of my other honorable mentions got um, poached, but it was oh. um, uh, Plie and Hypergal, which I co sign on both of those. Hell yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, are we done? <laughs> How, what, what's do our, need, what's our do, time? Uh, we're at like 26 minutes, but 26 I also do need to, I need, to, I need to leave in like a few minutes. Oh so. my Michael's got to go get his parents. Oh his parents God, are going to come visit. Usually we try to make these a little longer, but we just had such a smooth discussion. Today. I know. Hey, it just, it was so wa- wonderful and well, windy one and. Yeah. No time constraints or anything. Yeah. So, wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks everyone for listening. Um, you can find our stuff on patreon.com slash outside noise. Yes. Four, four, four. You can check our pin posts and stuff if you want to buy some tapes in stores. If you want to buy hats, yeah. okay, it's With, patreon.org slash You'll find it. It's in our calls. bio and stuff. Just go c- click yeah. the links. Um, um, and we've got hats and patches newly in yeah. our store on our website, so buy them. And I will mail them to you, and I'll I'll kiss the package even. Oh, wow. I you don't have to know. pay extra. Okay. No, I'm just saying. I'm just trying to make it extra special. We'll leave yeah. a little nice note. Yeah, yeah I'll say thank you. you. We'll, make, um, we'll make the next monthly one a little meatier. How well, about? Well, it was just so smooth. We yeah. just, yeah. Uh, we hope to have tape on the website we're at some point. On yeah, it. We're going to have cassette tapes of some of the albums that um, we enjoyed um, available for sale at some point. So. And I think there's still, if you're in Philly, there's still at Launderite Records. They're and still in New at York, I think Repo a couple of the stores records. still have them. Um, scroll back on our timeline. We got mm. all sorts of information about that. Yeah. Run, don't walk. Email us personally if you need help. Yeah. Yeah. It's also pinned. Just, it's yeah. fine. You got it. It's in a um, post. Yeah, that too. Oh, but yeah, that too. just another way, especially the store, just to support us if you can't do a Patreon or if that's not your thing. If you if you need an item in return. You uh, patch. Hell yeah. Uh, the Patreon is fun, though, because you also join our Discord server where oh, we hang yes. out and on voice and video chat all the time. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things with to their say. best friends. Yep. Well, anyway. Okay. <laughs> that's all the promo, I think. That's all I the think promo. we're good. That's all we have to promote. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Until next yeah. time, and also everybody. Also, the artists, go listen to them. Yes, yes please. Of all of them. Everyone we, talk everyone about. we talked about. There's a list in the description. Especially Wendy Eisenberg, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. yeah. Because they win. Thanks. All right. Yes. Um, Bye. Bye. Bye.